بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا مزيدا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Yesterday I covered the main aspects of the last 10 nights of Ramadan and I purposely left out the details of one of the most significant matters which is the night of Laylat al-Qadr I wanted to single it out in a talk because it's something that needs to be addressed before the 10 nights because you have to prepare for it because it's one of those nights you've had many opportunities in Ramadan and this is one of your final shots at it and as we mentioned in the first khatira man qama laylat al qadr imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi this is the final shot at it the night of laylat al qadr an entire surah an entire surah was revealed about it. An entire surah with five verses and it was named after it. And then if you go to the beginning of uh, Surah Al-Dukhan, you got approximately four to six verses in that surah speaking about Laylat Al-Qadr. So you got nearly, nearly 11 verses in the Quran and an entire surah talking about that one night, night of Laylat Al-Qadr. It's not any ordinary night. A night the Quran was revealed in Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr And likewise in the start of al-dukhan Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil mubaraka We've sent this Quran down in the night of laylatil qadr Now why was it called laylatil qadr? For one or two reasons Or for both reasons together And it goes back to the root word of qadr Qadr means in Arabic the value, importance Night of laylatil qadr is deeply valued And we're going to speak about its value inshallah the second reason is Qadr comes from destiny. It means your destiny is written in this night. Someone will say, stop, stop here. You're confusing me. One minute you tell me it was written 50,000 years before the sky and the earth was created. And now you're telling me it's written in the night of the destiny. Make up your mind. Well, here's how it goes. It was written in the 50,000 years before the sky and the earth was created. Now on this specific night, the tasks of that year are given to the angels. فِيهَا يُفْرَقُ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ The tasks for the entire year are given to the angels. He's going to die. Muhammad, Abdullah is going to die. He's going to be prosperous. He's going to become poor for that entire year. So there's no time to sleep on a day that your provision is written. Your matters are given to the angels to carry out the tasks, both good and bad, on this night. So turn to Allah in mercy. Some people are going to be dead men walking on this night. Do you know what the night of the decree is? Do you even know what the night of Laylat al-Qadr is? If I were to buy something, something valuable, you come to me and ask me for it. I tell you, do you even know how much that costs? Immediately it's embedded in your mind, a very, very high price, such a high figure, Beyond that which is normal and which is comprehensible. Allah tells you, do you even know what Laylat al-Qadr is? Do you even know what you're going to get out of Laylat al-Qadr? Laylat al-Qadr khayrun min alfi shahar. The night of decree is better than a thousand months. That's your night. That's your night, brothers and sisters. If you're asked, what's your night? You say, it's Laylat al-Qadr. Some people say their night is the wedding night, the graduation night. The night their child was born on. Good stuff, not bad. However, how many say their night is the night that the burden of the sins was lifted off their backs? Wallahi, it should be the happiest night of your life. The night you spend a few hours in worship with Allah, yet you get 83.33 years worth of reward. Your Allahu Akbar, your Subhanallah, your Alhamdulillah is as if you said it non-stop for a thousand months. Your recitation and repentance is as if you did it non-stop for 83.33 years. Your standing before Him is as, as if you did it for 30,000 days. Do you know what Laylatul Qadr is? وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا Laylatul Qadr? Tell me by Allah. Tell me by Allah. Has he not been cheated who misses out on the blessings of this night? Hasn't he wronged and oppressed himself, he who spends it in vain or in prohibited gathering and settings? Abandon that comfortable sleep. Don't recline to laziness, especially on this night. Fix your feet firm to your Lord in humility and get those 83.3 years worth. 
It's not something anyone with his right mind misses out on. تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا The angels descend in the ruh. Jibreel alayhi salam. They descend by the permission. In the decree of Allah, they descend. In the authentic hadith, the angels in Sahih al-Jami' and others, if the angels descend more than the numbers of stones on this earth and Jibreel comes down with them. How beautiful. Have you imagined that? That explains the peace of that night. Jibreel, the angel, who stopped coming down when the Prophet ﷺ died. Now it's a sp super special occasion, so now he comes down. Now he comes down. The angels love the best, especially in worship. They're worshippers who never disobey Allah. لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يأمرون. They have a bait al ma'mur up there to worship by. Their nights and days are in worship. But they come on that night to this earth. They'd rather be worshipping in the earth and this night. Due to the value and significance of that night on this earth. The angels make the journey to come to this earth. And leave the heavens for this night. And some escape the opportunity and take a journey into cells, into, into sins, into the darkness of sins. Salam on he. Peace be, peace be that night. Peace it is that night. And it's a sign of that night. And there's many authentic hadith and there's non-authentic hadith many. Many mention. We'll mention some of them. Some signs appear during the night itself and others occur the following morning. And what's authentic on that is what Imam Muslim uh, reported uh, by Abu Huraira radiallahu an when he, he said we were talking Abu Huraira says we were talking about the Laylatul Qadr and mentioning stuff about it when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam heard him he said he, uh, he anyone amongst you remembers the night when the moon arose and it was like a piece of plate like a wan in moon like a half of a plate that's the first one then, the had then there's other hadith in Ab uh, Abu Dawood al-Tayalisi in al-Bazzar and Muslim Ahmad reported from Ubad ibn al-Samit that he said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Laylat al-Qadr is a clear and shining night as if there were a bright moon in it. Look at that. Pay attention to the wording. A bright night. Notice how he said as if it was a bright moon. As if it was a bright moon. The brightness of that night is nur. Allah put in it. The angels coming down as if it was a... It's not from the moon. The brightness is from something else. The angels going up and down. The brightness Allah put in it. The hadith also goes on to say it's calm and tranquil. It's a calm and tranquil night. The hadith goes on to say it's neither cold nor hot. Nor any shooting stars in it are thrown in that morning. So those are some of the signs of Laylat al-Qadr. The winds will be subtle in it, as some scholars said, but that's the opinion of some scholars. Some scholars said one may see a dream about it. That's the opinion of some scholars. Some said they might see uh, exceptional sweetness during their worship and salah in that night. And that's the opinion of some legitimate scholars. Some say the dogs don't park in it, but that's not correct at all. There's no proof on that, and that's false. Now what's after that? Those are some of the signs before on that night. What's after it? The sun appears the following morning, white and without rays, beamless in the following morning. According to Ibn Hajar and others, it's possible to pinpoint the exact night by those signs. Al-Tabari in Ibn Al-Arab in Ibn Arabi said that everyone gets reward of that night even if they cannot pinpoint the exact night. You get the reward, it's even if you don't know it. Some mentioned, and including Ibn Hajar, mentioned that you need to see a sign to get the full reward. Otherwise, you get a normal day's worth. Only those who see the sign will get the reward of a thousand months. Now, that's the weaker of the two opinions. That's a very weak opinion. Anyone who worships Allah, and it turns out to be that night, whether he's seen signs or not, inshallah ta'ala, he's going to get the full reward. As Subki and others suggested that if one knows it, if he sees the sign, he shouldn't tell anyone. Because that's like a karama. That's like somewhat of a, of a miracle to that believer. And it should be kept secret. Why? To avoid riya. To avoid show off. To avoid envy. As the, sto of the, of the verse with Surah Yusuf. And also, so will not occupy your time. You run around telling people, i seen this and that sign and I'm sure it's this night. Instead, you should occupy yourself in ibadah. 
And to avoid envy, it's like the verse uh, when uh, the father of Yusuf, Yaqub, told his son, لا تقصص رؤياك على أخوتك. When he seen the nice dream, he didn't want him to say that dream to them. Now the question everyone asks about this every year, we know the famous hadith when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went out to tell the Sahaba, then he, he told them, the, he was going to tell them the precise night. Then they seemed to quarrel and, and he forgot. He said, I came to tell you and I forgot. That's the mercy of Allah and the mercy of the Prophet Sallallahu that we don't know. It's from the mercy of Allah that he made his messenger forget it and not tell us. Mercy how? How is it mercy? Yes, it's mercy. Had we known it, known it I would be the first one to neglect all Ramadan, wait to that for that night and pray a little bit, do some a little bit of ibadah and then go back to sleep until the next day, next Laylatul Qadr. But he said it's in one of the 10 nights. So you can gain reward, much reward out of those 10 nights. Then it narrowed down to one of the odd nights of those 10 nights. Assume with me, assume with me, it's one of the 365 nights. It's still worth seeking it. If he said it's one out of the 365 nights, it's worth seeking it in every one of those 365 nights because you're getting 30,000 days worth out of anything you do in it. Pay attention to this example. If I say I'm going to write a day on a piece of paper and I'm going to hide it. One day out of the days of the year 2012. And if you give me a dollar on that day that I wrote and hid it, you get in return from me $30,000. A wise person with less than average mental capacity would get 365 together, set them aside, and every day give me the dollar. That way he's going to be guaranteed not to miss out on that great bargain. Worst case scenario, he loses a few hundred. But what's he going to gain for sure? $30,000. That's Laylatul Qadr. Work one night out of five nights and you get 30,000 nights worth. That's Laylatul Qadr. Allah was merciful. Allah was merciful when He narrowed it down for us. He could have said it's one out of the 365 days of the year and it would be worth pursuing. But not even the month of Ramadan. He narrowed it down for us in the 10 nights. In the odd nights of the 10 nights, which is only 5 days, according to the most popular opinion by the ulama. Then you get someone who says, which one of those 5 nights is it? Now that's getting too stingy with Allah. Work, work, work and worship. Those 5 nights, 10 nights, the month of Ramadan. It may be the determining night that Laylatul Qadr, what you do, something you did on it, that pleases you when you stand naked, uncircumcised before the scale on the judgment day, the day of terror, the day you're going to stand before. It may be what pleases you when you stand before Allah, the creator of the universe, the creator of the heaven and hell. It may be one thing you did on that night that pleases you in that stand. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّ زَلْزَلَةَ السَّاعَةِ شَيْءٌ عَظِيمٌ Mankind, fear your Lord, be dutiful to Him. The earthquake of the hour of the judgment day is a terrible thing. The day of the judgment day is a terrible thing. It may be that night that makes you among the most successful during that night. يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ وَتَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارَ وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارَ You see a nurse and mother forget about her nursling. And every pregnant woman will drop her load. وَتَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا And you shall see mankind as though they're drunk, running around in disarray, drunk. You, but they're not drunk. But what's the problem, ya Allah? وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارَ وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارَ But what? وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ Don't be stingy with Allah. It may be the immense reward you do on that day that gets you the success you're awaiting. It may be that night that gets you your book in your right hand and you run to your family saying, Ha umukra'u kitabiya, read my book, proud. Now let's get more practical. You're going to say, okay, 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 you convince me. Now what do I do? Now when, when you're on pursuit of Laylatul Qadr, uh, you do everything we mentioned in the previous khawatir. Salah, ibadah, Quran, dhikr, everything you know of. But this one has a specific dua to it, a specific authentic dua to it. And when you're pursuing the night of Laylatul Qadr, you should say it and say it more so in the final 10 nights as much as you can. Because it could be one of the final 10 nights more narrowed down as, you know, the, the uh, odd nights. Aisha Umm al-Mu'mineen radiallahu anha qalat, Ya Rasulullah, ra'ayta an wafaqt Laylatul Qadr, ma aqul? قال قولي اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فعفو عني. Oh Allah, you are the pardoner who likes to pardon, so pardon me. Pardon, عفو. 
It's not ghafoor. Why not ghafoor? Ghafoor and afu mean to forgive. But why afu? Literally speaking, afu means to erase. Old Arab used to say, you to athar al afat afat athar al qawm. Uh, when the traces in the desert, the foot, uh, footsteps in the desert would be, the traces of the feet would be gone. They say, Afat Athar al Qom. It's erased. So this is going to help explain it. What's the difference between the two? The ulama have given many differences. Some say forgiveness, Afu, is for leaving obligations. And the forgiveness of Ghafur is for doing the Haram. That's the opinion. It gets deeper than that. Some said, Maghfirah of Allah, Ghafur, is forgiving you. Yet it's still written, and you're going to be asked about it on the judgment day. It's going to be there, you're forgiven. But it's not erased. Until the judgment day, then it will be erased. And that's taken somewhat from a hadith in Bukhari, where Allah says to someone, He brings them closer and closer, He says, Do you remember sin and this sin and that sin? And He admits to all the sins. Then Allah says to him, Inni satartu alayka fi dunya wa al I covered it in the life before, and then I forgive it. So this is the maghfira, they said. Now what's the afu? It's a higher status than that. And that's what we're aiming for. It's when Allah forgives you, and erases it totally. So you're not even going to be, it's not even going to be brought up on the judgment day. Afu is when Allah forgives and erases and gets you and the angels to forget about it on the judgment day. So you will not be embarrassed. Afu is when he's pleased with you. Pleased that after the sin, you went deep in sincere repentance that he gave you his afu. Afu comes in many times in the Quran. Five of those times come combined with the all-powerful. Afu and Qadira. That he's able to punish, but he pardoned you. Afu and Ghafur come combined in the Quran. It's possibly to show that you can choose Maghfira and Allah will forgive you. But you can go a step further and try harder and get the Afu where it will be fully erased. Whatever you will look at, whatever way you look at it, it seems that Afu is an exaggerated form of Ghufran. And more rewards to it, a higher status, a higher honor of forgiveness. From my personal humble obs observation when I read the Quran, I notice that the real, real super major sins, Allah, when He forgives or tells people to forgive, He mentions Afu. For example, when the people of Musa worship the cow. When Allah forgives them, says, he uses the word Afu, not Ghafur. Even when Allah talks about those who mock the reciters of the Quran in the Battle of Tabuk, and uh, they, He says, if uh, we, we've forgiven some of them, He doesn't say Ghafarna, He says, لا تعتذروا قد, قد كفرتم بعد إيمانكم إن نعفو عن طائفة نعفو, not نخفر, because it's a super major sin, mocking Islamic rituals or matters or believers. Then, the uh, fleeing from the battle, a super major sin. When Allah mentions that, He says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَوَلَّوْا مِنْكُمْ يَوْمَ الْتَقَى الْجَمْعَانِ إِنَّمَا اسْتَزَلَّهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ بِبَعْضِ مَا كَسَبُوا وَلَقَدْ عَفَى عَفَى He uses the word عَفَى mean instead of غَفُورُ because these are super, super major sins. So we are trying to achieve the higher status of the عَفُو سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى اللَّهُمَّ إِنَّكَ عَفُوٌ تحب العفو فاعف عنا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وجزاكم الله خيرا